What is up everybody? Welcome to DFS by the Numbers. This is my betting breakdown video for UFC 278. We have Kamara Usman going against Leon Edwards too. And we are back for another betting breakdown video this week, breaking down UFC 278. We have a 12-fight card. We were supposed to have 13 fights. Unfortunately, we did have Shannon Young pulling out, and I am a, a sucker for good fight IQ and good game planning, and Shannon Young had a great game plan not showing up to the fight because that was a horrible matchup for her. Um, unfortunately, I did have Miranda Maverick in a parlay. I beat the line by like two whole dollars or more. So that's always fun. But yeah, we now are down to 12 fights, but still a, a very good card from top to bottom. The pay-per-view is is good. We have Kamar Usman, Leon Edwards. We have Jose Aldo, Rob Devalish, Philly. We have Harry Hunsucker, Tyson Pedro. For some reason, we have Yanan Wu, Lucy Pudilova. That's on there. We're paying for that. But we also have Luke Rockhold going against Paula Costa. So looking forward to this card, looking forward to hopefully making some money closing out this 12 week stretch with a winning night would be phenomenal and i do have a ton of bets for tonight so a lot to talk about before we get started if you guys can please leave a like on the video subscribe to the channel if you have not already lots of content throughout the week as always i'm going to be going through these fights from a betting perspective and a betting perspective only if you do want a further more in-depth breakdown on why i like which fighter on why i am betting what i did post a full card breakdown and prediction video on monday did a live stream on friday and then i'll be going live on saturday two hours prior to the prelims with best bet um so make sure you guys are subscribed and tuning into all of those all right so i say we get into it we will start the first fight of the night we have victor altamirano going against daniel da silva and i do have two bets here so i have um a couple parlays on this on this card and i don't typically do parlays but i did a couple on sunday because i really wanted to beat the line movement and i, I did so uh, <laughs> with Miranda Maverick, I beat a ton of line movement. A couple other fighters I beat a ton of line movement with, with these parlays because I knew they were going to get juiced throughout the week. Uh, but one parlay piece I did use is going to be the under 2.5 rounds in this fight. And I parlayed that up at minus one, I believe minus 165. Yeah, minus 165. And I have that parlay with something else we'll talk about soon. And then I also played one unit on the fight, doesn't go to decision straight. And I got that at minus 185 as well. So basically, I'm looking for some violence here. Daniel Da Silva is the definition of a killer be killed fighter. We have a couple of those fighters on this card. He is the first one. Um, typically, you don't see fight doesn't go to decision lines now at what is it, minus 230, minus 225. But this is a killer be killed fighter in Daniel Da Silva. I believe he has like 14 fights. None of them have been to decision. None of them have been over two and a half rounds. And none of them have even been to the third round. He's only been to the second round a couple times. Um, and we saw in the Molina fight, once that second round started, he literally had nothing left. Uh, he's going to go in there. He's going to throw big shots on the feet, look for the knockout. If the fight hits to the mat, and he's very, very aggressive. All Toronto has been submitted before. I think if Daniel Da Silva wins this fight, it's in the very first round. If he does not, Win this fight in the first round. I think Altamirano takes over and gets the finish himself. So I think the under, the fight doesn't go, covers both sides. Um, and I do have two plays on those. I have the under and a parlay. And I also have the fight doesn't go decision. One unit minus 185. Next, we have a Richie Long going against Jay Perrin. Um, I did end up pulling the trigger here on the dog on, on Jay Perrin. Uh, half a unit plus 126. I waited a little bit longer than I should have. Earlier in the week, he was like plus 140. Um, but yeah, ended up pulling the trigger there at plus 126 on FanDuel Sportsbook. And the reason being, I think this is a very close fight. We have the power shots of Arichi Long. They call him the, Mongol the Mongolian murderer, which is kind of funny, uh, <laughs> considering he only has a 37% finish rate, which is like the second worst finish rate on the entire card. Shanna Young had a higher finish rate. If you're the Mongolian murderer and that's your nickname... Um, you, you better have like a 90% finish rate, but no, this guy has a 37% finish rate. Um, the power is there. Um, he did knock out Cameron Ellis, but again, that is Cameron Ellis. How much stock do we really put into that? Uh, Jay Perrin has never been knocked out in his entire career. Very good chin. And the reason I did take the dog shot here on Jay Perrin is I, I like a lot of things in his game. The first thing is going to be the cardio. The cardio is there. It's going to be, you know, at elevation here in Utah. And Jay Perrin is the guy that can go 15 minutes, no problem. He can go 25 minutes, no problem. He's been 25 minutes before, right? Um, Richie Long does slow down as the fight goes on. Um, Jay Perrin also has a great fight. He fights to a good game plan. I do trust him to go in there. Um, if he doesn't like how it's going on the feet, um, putting the fight against the cage, taking this fight down to the mat. And he's somebody that is training with Marab Devalish Philly. He's somebody that can go for a ton of takedowns, get some takedowns. And I feel like overall, it's a very close fight. You know, the hard shots are going to be landing on the Richie Long side. I don't think he knocks out Jay Perrin. I think this fight does go the distance. And I think Perrin can win minutes on the cage, 
with takedowns and win a very close decision. So, uh, yeah, give me the plus money. Jay Perrin, half a unit, plus 126. Next, we have Amir Albazi going against Francisco Figueredo. Um, Albazi is a parlay piece for me. Uh, maybe not now. I got him at minus 390. Like I said, on Sunday, I put some parlays in. Um, but, you know, at this point, probably look at some props for Albazi. Minus 510 is definitely steep, and people are definitely putting him in their parlays, and rightfully so. Francisco Figueredo just does not offer a ton. Very low volume on the feet, landing, I think, less than two significant strikes per minute. Does not possess the same power as his brother or really anywhere near it. His cardio is very poor, and again, we're at elevation. How's it going to look at elevation when his cardio is, is bad in general? Um, Albazi is going to be the better striker, more volume. Albazi is going to you know be comparable in terms of the grappling. Both fighters are good grapplers, but I think it's more likely that Albazi is going to be the one to get on top. The only thing I'll say is Albazi, we have not seen him in about a year and a half. Um... But if he comes back, he's. I think. I think he's. You know, going to make improvements. He's only like 28 or 29 years old. Um, I do like Albazi here quite a bit. Um, as a parlay piece, is fine. Uh, I like the round three decision for Albazi as well. I'm not sure what that is, but that was something I was considering. But overall, I do have Albazi in a parlay, and I do feel pretty comfortable with that. Next, we have AJ Fletcher going against Ange Lusa. I did take the dog shot here on Ange Lusa. Kind of waited throughout the week. Was figuring a figure to get a better line and. Kind of did. I have half a unit, um, plus 140 here on Ons Lucia. Ons Lucia, my bad. Um, but yeah, I think it's a close fight. We have AJ Fletcher, who is a guy that is going to try to get this fight down to the mat. And what I looked for in the tape for Ons Lucia was, you know, how good is this guy's takedown defense? And the answer to that is it's phenomenal. I was very impressed with the takedown defense of Ons Lucia. Very, very, very hard to take down. I've seen him go for offensive takedowns in his own right which he potentially could do here. Uh, we saw Matt Simmelsberger take down A.J. Fletcher, and when Simmelsberger got on top, Fletcher didn't really have anything off his back. I've seen Angelusa go out there, get takedowns, and have success on top. Um, as the fight goes on, again, we're talking elevation, right? A.J. Fletcher slowed down in his last fight against Matt Simmelsberger. If he goes out here with a wrestling-heavy game plan like I expect him to, and he's not successful with those takedowns, what is A.J. Fletcher going to look like in that second round and that third round? I like the cardio of Lusa. I like the takedown defense of Lusa. I like that he's going to have a 7-inch reach advantage on the feet. I think that's huge in a fight where I feel like he stuffs the takedowns, keeps him on the feet. Um, I like Lusa here as, as a dog. Plus 140, half a unit. I know there's, there's a lot of hype on AJ Fletcher, but I think it's a tough matchup for him. Um, so, yeah, give me Ange Lusa for the win. Ange Lusa probably by decision, but I just put a half unit on him at plus 140. Next, we have uh, Sean Woodson going against Luis Saldana. I do have a bet on here as well. I have Sean Woodson to win inside the distance. I got that at plus 170. Have a half a unit on that. And then I also sprinkled a quarter unit on Sean Woodson to win in round two, plus 650. And then Sean Woodson to win in round three, quarter unit, plus 1100. Those are on FanDuel Sportsbook there. But um, yeah, I, I like Sean Woodson here quite a bit. Uh, I think it's a good parlay piece as well. I think it's a tough matchup for Luis Saldana, and I, I think Saldana is a very talented striker. I think he has a lot of great things on the feet going for him, but there's one big red flag with Luis Saldana. We go back to the elevation. This guy has the worst cardio on the entire card. <laughs> this guy's cardio is um, maybe a little bit better than Harry Hunsucker's cardio, but man, his cardio is very bad. He's slowing down the end of the first round. He has nothing left in that second and third round. He's putting his hands on his knees. He's putting his hands on his hip, he's, hips. He's looking up at the clock um, in that second and third round, which is just not a, a good thing to see. Sean Woodson is going to have a height advantage, a reach advantage. He's going to be much bigger. He's going to throw a lot of volume. He's going to put it on Luis Saldana, and I think he breaks him down the stretch. So I think those second and third round knockout props are very live for Sean Woodson. I have a quarter unit, Sean Woodson round two, quarter unit, Sean Woodson round three and then a, a half a unit on Woodson to win inside the distance. And like I said, I don't mind him as a parley piece as well. Outside of Luis, Luis Saldana winning in the first round, you know, how does he win this fight? Because um, he's, he's going to have nothing left after that, after that first five minutes, four minutes even. So, yeah, I like Sean Woodson here quite a bit. I think he finishes Luis Saldana. Uh, Jared Gordon going against Leonardo Santos. I do have a bet here as well. As you guys can tell, most of my action is on these prelims, but... I do have a half a unit on the fight doesn't go to decision, uh, plus 120, and then I have a quarter unit on Leonardo Santos to win by first round knockout at plus 1800. Um, I think that's his path to victory. We saw that Santos is still extremely dangerous. He hits very, very hard. Jared Gordon's been finished by knockout four times, three of those in the UFC. Uh, Leonardo Santos is going to be much bigger than Jared Gordon, and skill for skill, I think Leonardo Santos is much more skilled 
than Jared Gordon. The reason why he's a big dog here is because he's 42 years old and he has about five minutes of gas, if that, at this point. We saw him slow down very bad in the Bogota fight. We saw him slow down very bad, very, very bad in the Guido fight. Um, but I think he's going to have opportunities early. Again, Jared Gordon, he's going to pressure. He's going to leave himself open to get hit. Leonardo Santos hits like a truck. I think that's that KO for Santos is very, very live and very live in the first round. So if you like Santos, I think the first round prop's not a bad look. If you like Jared Gordon, I think if a live betting standpoint would be phenomenal. I, there's a good chance that, Jer that Jared Gordon loses his first round. If not, just gets completely flatlined in the first round. So for me, half a unit fight doesn't go plus 120. I think it covers both sides. Santos early, Gordon late. And then I also have a quarter unit on Leonardo Santos to win by first round knockout plus 1,800. All right, next we have uh, Alexander Romanov going against Marcin Tibera. Um, yeah, believe it or not, Marcin Tibera is a very, very popular dog this week. And, and he's a big dog as well, and I, I get why. Um, Romanov should probably not be this big of a favorite. Am I still going to pick Romanov? I am. Um, one thing that really swayed me towards his way was... He looks like a completely different fighter um, physically than he ha did like in the Espino fight. Like he went and he really focused on his strength and conditioning. It looked like he looks like he's in much, much, much better shape. And if Romanov can go a full hard three rounds, I think he's going to be a very, very dangerous fighter and very dangerous in this matchup. If he came in and it looked like he did in the Espino fight, you know, weighing in at like 264, 265, um, probably would even take the dog shot here in Tiber. It's just, I feel like Romanov has went and worked on his cardio. He did not look good in the Espino fight. And I do think he's going to need his cardio here if he does not get the early finish, which he could get the early finish if he does get on top of Tibera. Romanov has very good ground and pound, a sneaky submission game, but this is an interesting matchup. Tibera, very good takedown defense. Tibera's a black belt in BJJ. Tibera's an okay striker. He has okay cardio. Um, I do think Romanov can get takedowns here, though. I do think he can get on top and land some ground and pound. I don't know if he finishes Tibera early. I kind of feel like this fight gets extended. From a betting perspective, nothing's really sticking out. Like I said, I was tempted on the dog shot in Tibera, but... Um, Ended up passing there. I'm going to pick Romanov to win. I'm actually picking him to win by decision, but this fight very well could finish. Romanov's a beast. Uh, Tibera is a good finisher in his own right. And this is not a fight I want anything to really do with. Um, the fight doesn't go to decisions. Minus 225 on, on Bet Online. It looks like it's coming down on some other books. Even that, it's like, I'm just, I think I'm going to pass on this one. Sit this one out. But yeah, the pick's Romanov, but no bet for me. Uh, next, we have uh, Tyson Pager going against Harry Hunsucker. By the way, I am doing a contest on Twitter. Um, to see who can get uh, guess the closest to Harry Hunsucker and his significant strikes winner gets 25. If you get it on the dot, I'm doubling it to 50. So check out the Twitter. It's the pinned tweet for the Harry Hunsucker significant strike contest. Um, all the lower numbers are gone, but if you want to be contrarian and guess a high number for Harry Hunsucker, you can. But anyway, um, yeah, Pedro's going to run through Harry Hunsucker here. I'm a big Harry Hunsucker fan. Uh, very exciting guy. Uh, fought at light heavyweight for his entire career up until now, cutting down to light heavyweight. And... Um, I don't know. Not, not much to say here. Hunsucker, I don't think he's UFC caliber. Hunsucker's been finished five times all by knockout. Hunsucker's tapped to strikes twice, including a tap to strikes against Dontel Mays. Um, does not have good cardio. Uh, maybe his cardio's improved a little bit since the, the cut here but to light heavyweight, but I don't know. Um, Pedro should be better everywhere, better striker, much better grappler. Hunsucker is a brown belt for what it's worth, but you know Pedro very well can take him down and submit him here. Uh, Hunsucker's never seen the the second round in his entire career, and twelve professional fights has actually over been, uh, ever been over one half of a round twice, just twice. Um, I think this fight finishes early. I think this fight finishes in the first round. Apparently, Hunsucker's saying that he's he wants this fight to go into the second round, which is weird. Um, his goals to get this fight into the second round, that's that's weird to me. But, yeah, I, don't, I think Pedro's going to finish him here. I think Pedro can take him down and submit him. I think Pedro can knock him out on the feet. Um, yeah, Huntsucker's a good hammer. Horrible nail. I think Pedro finishes him here. Uh, Pedro by submission was something that kind of stuck out as, like, plus 400. Pedro first round sub kind of stuck out. But I do have two bets on this fight. I do have the under one and a half parlayed with the under two and a half in the Altamirano Lacerda fight or De Silva fight. Um, I got that at plus 106, one unit on that parlay. I think both fights go under. Um, I don't expect this fight to really see that second round, and I'd be shocked if it saw the over one and a half, and I'd just be flabbergasted if it saw the third round, and uh, I'd probably quit betting on MMA if it saw the full decision here. But And I also have the fight doesn't go to decision in a parlay. I know what you guys are saying, oh, the fight doesn't go to decision. is like minus 1,400. Actually parlayed it at minus 900, so getting some some solid value there. But yeah, the fight doesn't go decision. Um, 
one of the safest parlay pieces of the year. It's juiced to the tits, but um, if it doesn't hit, I'd like I'd be I'd be shocked for for months or years that this fight uh, went to decision. But I don't think it does. Both fighters 100% finish rate. Um, they've been finished in a combined seven of eight losses. This fight's gonna finish. If it doesn't, I'd be like I said, I'd be surprised. Um, so yeah, fight is a good decision and a parlay piece. We'll talk about the other parlay piece in a second here. Um, I do have three parlays we'll talk about. And then uh, the under two and a half, or the under one and a half parlay with the under two and a half in the De Silva fight. All right, uh, we will go to the next fight. Lucy Putalova going against Yanan Wu. Um, dog or pass here, but it's going to be a clear pass for me. This is my 1-800 gambler fight of the, of the, of the week. Um, yeah, not betting on this fight. It's, uh, it's, it's crazy to me that this fight is on the pay-per-view. People are actually paying money for this. Um, what is it, 75, 80 bucks now to, to watch Lucy Putalova going against Yanan Wu, the worst fight on the entire card is on the pay-per-view, and people have to pay for it. Um, it's, it's insane to me. Um, like Romanov Tibera should be on the main card instead. Jared Gordon, Leonardo Santos should be on the main card instead. Woodson Saldana main card instead. Fletcher, Luke, every single fight would be would be a better fight than this. I mean, these fighters. I think William Nons like one in four in the UFC. Lucy Putalova got cut, beat a couple of fighters that aren't great, and she's back. And I don't know. Um, but yeah, I'm not betting on this fight. You couldn't pay me to bet on this fight. But if you put a gun to my head, um, I'd say no. no I'd, I'd I'd say Wu Yanan, Wu Yanan here, but uh, yeah, pass. Murad Devosh, Philly going against Jose Aldo. Um, this one's a weird one. This one is a very weird one because I feel like it's almost too easy, but uh, the line does not really indicate that. And I do like Jose Aldo here. Um, simple as he has a 90% takedown defense. He's fought the who's who. He's fought the much better competition. It's not even close. This is a big step up from Murad Devosh, Philly. Going from guys like Marlon Marais, going from, you know, these other guys like Casey Kenny's, um, you know, guys like that, uh, to Jose Aldo. And, yeah, Rob's a, a favorite here, and it kept getting better and better as the week goes on. I pulled the trigger at plus 120. I see a plus 122 out there, plus 125, and it seems like a lot of people are on the Jose Aldo side, but it just the line keeps getting wider in favor of Rob. It's a close fight. I'm not going to go out here and say Jose Aldo should be minus 300. It's a close fight. It's a very close fight. I'm taking the dog shot on Jose here. Half a unit, plus 120. Um, I, I like the takedown defense on the feet. It's it's not even close. And I feel like there's a situation where Rob Devosh really does go out here. He does land a few takedowns, but it is so hard to take down Jose Aldo. It's even harder to hold down Jose Aldo. Like, if this was a five-round fight, yeah, Rob all day. It's not a five-round fight. It's three rounds. Jose should be able to stuff the takedowns, especially early on. He should be able to pop right back up. And when it's on the feet, it's... You know, Josie's going to be landing the harder shots. If if the judges score this correctly, you know, we're supposed to be judging fights based off of damage. Are they going to score failed takedown attempts for Marab Is Are they going to score that? Are they going to score, you know, him taking down Josie and, and getting right back up? Or are they going to score the harder shots? You know, him maybe stunning Marab here and there on the feet. Um And I think they should probably favor this based off of damage. And if that happens, it should be Josie Aldo. Um, I think as early in this fight, especially, I do favor Jose Aldo. If this fight does get extended, and it will, you know, maybe down the stretch you favor Marab. But yeah, this is a close fight. What are the judges going to favor? Are they going to favor the, the takedown attempts, the failed takedown attempts, the completed takedowns where he gets a takedown but Aldo pops right back up? Or are they going to favor the harder shots of Jose Aldo? Um, so I do like the dog shot on here. Um, it should be, it's, it's a close fight. It's a very close fight. And that is why also put a quarter unit on the fight to end by a split or majority decision. And it's simple as that. You know, are the judges going to score the takedown attempts? Are they going to score the damage? Are the judges even watching the fight? Do they even know who won? No, they don't. Do they know what they're looking at? No, most of the time they don't. Um, I feel like a split is super live here if this goes to decision. This has split written all over it, hoping Josie gets that split. But yeah, quarter unit plus 400 for the split. This fight is like minus 200 or so to go to decision. It's favored heavily to go to decision. Um, I feel like a split is very, very live here. So give me Jose, though. Don't feel amazing about it. Um, a lot of people are on Jose, and this line just keeps getting away. And I, I saw that Drake put like a couple million, I believe, on Jose Otto, which is not a good sign. I saw Adesanya put a big bet on, on Jose Otto on, on stake, right, um, which is never good. But hopefully the Drake curse is uh, is broken, and hopefully Jose gets it done. But it should be a, a close fight regardless. Next, we have Paula Costa going against Luke Rockhold. This fight is going to close out a couple parlays here. So, 
Um, the first parlay piece I have is uh, Paula Costa, Luke Rockhold, under 2.5 rounds, parlayed with Pedro Huntsucker, fight doesn't go, two units on that parlay at minus 162. Um, so I do like that parlay there, and then I also had Paula Costa parlayed with Miranda Maverick, which is a shame, just a, a big shame, because I beat the line movement on, on those fighters by a ton. Um, got Paula Costa at minus 285, this was on Sunday, and then I parlayed Miranda Maverick at like... Minus like 350, something crazy. Like then she she closed at like minus 670. Um, so now I just have two units straight on Paula Costa, which is fine. That's fine. I, I like Paula Costa a lot here. Uh, Luke Rockhold, five knockout losses. Luke Rockhold coming back off of a three-year layoff, and he's coming back to a very tough matchup against Paula Costa. Paula Costa, very good takedown defense, very hard to take and hold down. Apparently he's a black belt in BJJ. Um, but I feel like on the feet... You know, Luke Rockle definitely has some tools, but he's 37. He's 37, almost 38 years old. He can't take a punch. Paul Acosta should pressure this guy and knock him out and probably in the first round. So um, would it be completely shock if Luke Rockle went out here, got the takedown, and finished the fight? No, but, man, he's got a lot going against him, just a lot going against Luke Rockle. The dude has not won a fight in five years. We have not seen him fight in three years. And the last time we saw him fight, he looked like complete crap. So unless he's made like massive adjustments and improvements, which is hard to see for a 37, 38 year old, um, I think this is Paula Costa here. So yeah, Costa, I have two units on him straight because uh, Shannon Young pulled out. Congrats, Shannon Young. He did not lose the fight. And then I also have um, the under 2.5 in a parlay with the fight doesn't go to the decision and the Hunsucker and Pedro fight. All right, main event here. Kamar Usman going against Leon Edwards. And there's a lot of people out there on Leon Edwards, and you don't typically see it, um, you know, day to day. But when Leon Edwards fight, he has a huge, huge fan base. Like, this guy has a, a ton of fans. Um, I don't personally get it. I'm not a big fan of the guy, but this a lot of people love this guy. Um, so how does Leon Edwards win this fight? And I'm really struggling with that. The narrative is Kamara Usman's not going to wrestle because of his knees. The other narrative is he's not going to strike because of his wrist. Like, you know, um, so if, if that's the case, if he's not going to strike because of his wrist, the surgery, if he's not going to wrestle because of his knees, then yeah, if that if that's the case, you know, Leon Edwards should win the fight, right? Um, but my, my goodness, uh, you know, Kamar, he'll be fine, man. He's he's going to wrestle. Um, I guess the popular take is Kamar Usman's not going to wrestle. I think he does. Um, people are bringing up the fact that he didn't wrestle against Gilbert Burns. Okay, why would he do that? Why would he wrestle against Gilbert Burns? Um, they're bringing up the fact that he didn't wrestle against Kobe, Colby. Uh, why why would he do that? He doesn't. He didn't need to. Um, he wrestled against Masvidal in the first fight a ton, clinched a ton, wrestled a ton. And then the second fight did a little bit, did a lot of striking. And, you know, Kamar Usman's improved his striking so much since their their first fight. Um, you know, that, that jab's phenomenal. The power is now translating for Kamar Usman. Uh, Kamar Usman is, is landing a ton of knockdowns. I think seven knockdowns his last five fights. So how does Leon Edwards win this fight? Is he going to knock out Kamar Usman? Leon Edwards has two knockouts in the UFC. Is Leon Edwards going to submit Kamara Usman? I think Leon Edwards has maybe one sub, maybe two in the UFC. Is Leon Edwards going to win a decision against Kamara Usman? I don't see it. I mean, unless Usman really comes out here and doesn't wrestle. If Usman comes out here and, and strikes with Leon Edwards, then sure. You know, Edwards can definitely win. It'll be, it'll be competitive. Um, but why wouldn't he wrestle? You know, that the whole, the knee, it's, it's all, all narrative-based, like... Usman should go out here, clinch up Edwards, take him down, um, and win this fight. So I know a lot of people are on Edwards. I just don't personally see it, um, and I do think Usman w wins this fight. Um, I know a lot of people don't like Usman, but I think he's going to be champ for for a while. Um, just don't really see anybody stop. Like, he already ran for, through Masvidal twice. He ran through Colby twice. This is He's going to run through Edwards twice. Um, just don't – and he was, he's 35 years old, so – he was getting up there in age, right? Um, but yeah, he should he should win this fight. So I do have Kamar Usman in a parlay. Um, parlay to this on Sunday. I don't believe I beat. Yeah, I didn't beat any line movement on this on this Usman spot um, because, like I said, a lot of people are on Edwards. But I parlayed Kamar Usman with uh, Mir Al Bazi 
two units minus 263. So that is my parlay to end the night. Uh, don't mind the Usman 4-5 decision. Um, actually, no, I, I wouldn't play that because I, I keep playing the Usman 4-5 decision. I played it in the Burns fight. I played it in the, the Masvidal fight, and he keeps knocking these guys out. So you know what? I, I don't like that. Um, I do like Kamar Usman as a parlay piece. Um, and, yeah, I think Usman gets it done. So we have my final best here. Yeah, lots of action for this card. The three dog shots I have, uh, half a unit Jose Aldo plus 120, half a unit Angelusa plus 140, half a unit Jay Perrin plus 126. Um, the, two, the three parlays I have, uh, Amir, Amir Albazi parlay with Kamara Usman, two units minus 163. Uh, Harry Hunsucker, Tyson Pedro fight doesn't go to decision. Parlayed with the under 2.5 rounds and the cost of Rockhold fight doesn't go to decision. Uh, minus 162, two units on that. And then one unit on Pedro Hunsucker under 1.5. And the Altamirano De Silva under 2.5, plus 106, one unit. Um, straight bet on Costa, two units minus minus 285. I have a half a unit on the Gordon Santos fight doesn't go to decision. A quarter unit on Santos to win by first round knockout, plus 1,800. Uh, one unit on the fight doesn't go to decision. Altamirano, Daniel De Silva. A half a unit on Sean Woodson to win inside the distance, plus 170. Quarter unit on the second and third round props for Sean Woodson. Second round, plus 650. Third round, plus 1,100. And then a quarter unit on the Marab Aldo. Fight to end by split or majority decision. That is the action. The goal is to complete this 12-week stretch with a winning night. That'd be nice. Um, I will be taking the, the week off, and we do have a week off in general, but I will be going on my honeymoon to Florida. I will be missing... The majority, if not all, the fights. So going to be catching back up on these fights throughout the week. If you have any questions, hit me up on Twitter, DFS underscore numbers, Instagram, DFS by the numbers. Go check out that Harry Hunsucker significant strike contest. Uh, leave a like, subscribe to the channel. Let's keep growing the channel, guys. Do appreciate all the likes and subscribes there. And uh, yeah, best of luck for UFC 278. Let us make some money. And we'll talk to you guys very soon. Enjoy the week off. See you guys later.